Welcome back to Process Dynamics and to Control. Today we're going to be talking about proportional integral derivative controllers, and uh, essentially the uh, you know the, this this PID equation. We're going to be uh, covering it. We're also going to be covering with a particular focus today on the derivative portion of that PID equation and uh, how this is used in practice. Okay, so derivative on measurement versus derivative on air and how that's used and tuned in practice. And then we're also, we'll also uh, talk about how PV noise, uh, the measurement noise, degrades derivative action many times. And so um, you know, many uh, practitioners actually just eliminate the derivative term. So hopefully we can give you just a little bit of background on this derivative term, see if it's right for the particular control application, and uh, go into um, some of the uh, issues with the derivative on a PID controller. Okay, so let's just review first of all uh, the PID uh, controller. This is the ideal form. Okay, so you take and you have uh, this control output bias. Okay, so that's going to be the nominal value of where you turn on the controller. Uh, and you um, then have a proportional term. So a tuning constant that is proportional to the air. And then you have the integral of the air and then another tuning constant, tau sub i, which uh, allows you to adjust uh, the degree of uh, the size and magnitude of, of this term in front. So as you decrease tau i, that term becomes larger. And then the final term is a kc times uh, tau d. Okay, so you use the tau d on this term uh, to be able to multiply by the derivative. Okay, so we're going to be focusing for today's discussion on this derivative term. Okay, and uh, just keep in mind that the air uh, is always defined as the set point minus the process variable. So this is our target value, and then this is our measured value. Okay, so uh, let's go on. We have the ideal uh, uh, PID controller, uh, and you have the derivative of this that's the slope or the rate of change. Okay, so here's my PV value. Okay, my PV value. And then uh, the slope, if I take any point, Okay, just draw a tangent to it. That's going to be the, the slope of that point. Okay, and so if I draw it, you know, like this, um, then the slope here is going to be zero. And it's also going to be zero right here. But in between, it's going to go up to a higher value. Okay, and so, um, you know, it's going to change over time. And one other thing to keep in mind on this tau d is that it has units of time. So it's, it's always going to be positive. Um, tau d and tau i in our PID equation are always going to be positive, and kc can either be positive or negative. Okay, so, um, and also one of the other things, uh, let's just back up a little bit. Uh, we have a proportional term that considers how far you are from the PV, and so if you're further from the PV, you um, I have a larger term, a contribution from that proportional term. Um, the integral term addresses how long and how far you are away because it's integrating the area under the curve and it'll become much larger faster if it's further away, but if it's for a long time, um, it'll also grow in value for the integral term. The derivative term, on the other hand, is how fast, um, how fast you're changing at any time. And what it typically does is if you have a set point change, let's say you just have a set point change here, and you're trending up, you know, without the derivative term, you may uh, have some oscillations. And what it's going to do is if you have a positive air here, uh, that it's going to tend to slow you down just a little bit, okay, and kind of limit the overshoot that you would otherwise experience with the, uh, with, uh, without the derivative term. Okay, so we're going to talk about, um, you know, if you have a rapidly changing air, then you have a large derivative, and then you'll have a large impact on the controller output from that term. Okay, um, and also the air can be positive or negative. Okay, so if the, uh, the derivative on air is going up, then the derivative um, is going to be positive, but it's, if it's trending down, then uh, the derivative on air is going to be negative. Okay, um, Okay. so that's just one thing in, uh, to keep in mind. Um, one of the other things to keep in mind is that um, 
you know, if you have a set point change, okay, so let's say this is my set point, um, the derivative here for the air, okay, so let's say we, we trend up like that on our PV value. Um, right here, the air is nearly zero, and then right here, the air is very large. And so if you're doing finite differencing, the air just changed a lot, okay? So if you have D air, D time, kind of finite difference to approximate this derivative, then uh, you're going to see that um, you know, this is going to cause a very large contribution to your PID equation. Okay, so what we often do in, in this is just do the derivative on measurement versus the derivative on the air. Okay, and so um, if you just plug in the air is going to be set point minus PV and just plug that in here to the air and then you just assume that set point with respect to time is going to be constant then uh, you get an, a nearly equivalent form um, where you have just the negative of the PVDT versus the air uh, with respect to time. So um, this is a, a more desirable form because it avoids this type of what's called derivative kick. Okay, so you get a kick whenever you change the set point if you're using the derivative on air versus the derivative on the measurement. Okay, so um, let's just see that with the derivative on the air. So I'm trending along and then I have a set point change here and uh, my process variable is going to respond um, and then it gets up to a new set point and then I have another set point change. Now for each of these I have a derivative kick because I have the derivative on the air. But when I do the derivative on the PV instead, then there is uh, no kick at those points and the control response is nearly identical. So the kick doesn't necessarily you know, affect operations that much. It's pretty quick. You only have one cycle where that air might have been large. Um, but it's good to get rid of that kick. You know, you don't want a valve opening and shutting very rapidly if you can avoid it. Okay, so um, as we mentioned before, um, you know, on the air, let's just relate that to PV and how it changes. So here again, the, the DPVDT is, is, is uh, you know, it's zero, and then it's going to become a very large positive value. Okay, and then here it's going to become zero, and then in this region it's going to become negative again. Okay, so you just have to, to visualize the slope of that signal, and that's going to be, um, you're going to be including that into your PID equation. Okay, um, let's just go on to the next side. So, um, again, just to review, proportional term provides the rapid response to control error. The integral term is going to eliminate offset, but increases oscillatory or rolling behavior of the PV. And then the derivative term works to decrease oscillation. So if you're approaching a set point very fast, it says slow down, I'm going there too fast, um, and, and works to decrease and, and kind of offset some of the integral term effects. There really aren't um, many cases of proportional derivative controllers only. Um, normally it's, uh, you know, if you have an integrating process, you'll implement, um, okay, a P only controller. Okay, that's a P only controller. And then if you have uh, most controllers, probably 80% of them are these PI controllers. Um, but then some of them, if you want to be able to control oscillatory behavior, you'll do the full PI and D controller. Okay, so um, one thing to keep in mind is that we have, uh, you know, we want to uh, be able to decrease oscillations compared to PI performance with the PID. And you can see this is a PI controller and this is PID. So this came up, it oscillated. This one had less oscillation, so we were able to slow down the speed of the response, um, control it just a little bit better. Now one thing that we saw on our valve, um, now this might be a, a valve in this case, you know, percent open, is that with a PI controller, the response of the valve is very smooth, okay, to this two set point changes. But then when you get over here to the PID, then you see a lot of the measurement noise 
that's being amplified, okay? And so the valve is traveling a lot more, and that may uh, have the effect of wearing out the valve. Okay, so reducing the life of the, the valve. Okay, so that's, that's primarily the disadvantage of the, the derivative term is that uh, measurement noise can be a problem, okay? So um, it's just gonna amplify that uh, measurement noise. So one thing we do is we just put a filter um, on the air measurement. So if you have something like this, if you just sample two points and get a derivative measurement, it may be uh, highly variable. And so sometimes uh, people fit the you know, last 10 points to a line. Uh, sometimes you have a filter, okay, that can just kind of track the uh, measurements and you take the derivative on that filtered value or the linear uh, slope from the past five or 10 measurements. Okay, so those are some of the ways to overcome some of the noise. Um, you know, filtering it or taking that moving average is going to decrease the responsiveness of the derivative term. But um, you know, if that's uh, you know if that's one way to include the derivative term if there's significant amounts of noise. Okay, so um, so again, here is you know the noise an example of noise degrading the performance. If I just took these two values versus a moving average or a, a filter that I could take the uh, derivative on that term instead. Okay, now, um, you know, if we have increasing noise in the PV, sometimes you tune a controller, you know, tuned here, um, but then uh, over time, for whatever reason, the measurement noise starts to increase. You can see it's very smooth here. Here it starts to increase and it increases even more. And you may get uh, this type of controller output behavior. So if, if this happens, then it's probably corresponding to an increase in noise in the measurement. And uh, that may be justification for looking at your measurement device. There may be something wrong with it, um, but it can significantly increase the uh, you know, wearing out your valve or uh, other control element that you um, have in place. Okay, um, you know, and again, here's the example of with the filter. Okay, so if you put a filter on the derivative term, that you can get uh, acceptable performance, you know, decreased oscillation, um, and uh, you have less uh, valve travel. Okay, so that can help the performance if you put, do put a derivative uh, filter on the derivative term. Okay, so that's the end of, of this lecture. Um, come and uh, see more content at apmonitor.com.